actually find a document in the file system. Every time a file is written to the hard drive's file system, the operating system keeps an index of all the locations where the files are stored. This index is called the FAT, or the File Allocation Table. Every time the operating system needs a file, say a Microsoft Word document from your desktop, it reads the File Allocation Table to know where the file is located in the file system. Once it obtains the location, the location and retrieval request is passed to the computer's operating system, the BIOS. The BIOS, in return, asks the hard drive controller, the board on the back of the hard drive, to find the file needed based on the location listed in the FAT. The controller board looks up where the document in the file system is actually physically stored in the platters, clusters, tracks, and cylinders. Once the document is located, it is passed back to the operating system in reverse order. That's fairly interesting, but what happens when a file is deleted? To understand what happens when a file is deleted, you have to understand how data is, is divided from an e-discovery perspective. For the purposes of computer forensics, the allocated space of a drive is divided into two categories. Used or active space. This space contains active files, that is, those files that have been stored on the drive by the action of the operating system or user and which are recognized by the FAT as active files. Active files are available to the user without the use of any recovery utilities or special viewers. Free space is that portion of the allocated space that is available to new data being stored on the drive. The computer recognizes free space because the FAT does not indicate that the allocated space at issue is occupied by an active file. In casual use, free space is often called unallocated space, although this is technically incorrect. As a drive is used, the FAT records file locations and permits retrieval of the files upon, based upon user or operating system request. When a user or operating system indicates that a file is to be deleted, all that happens is the FAT record is modified to indicate that the drive space occupied by that file is no longer used and is now free and available for reuse. So what does this mean? This means that delete does not actually mean delete. Until the space is reused, the deleted document resides intact in exactly the same physical location it occupied prior to being deleted. Only the file allocation table has been affected. The reason for this is straightforward. Software designers saw no purpose in using valuable CPU resources to laboriously write a series of electronic zeros over an unused file when a simple modification to the FAT would remove the document from sight as far as ordinary applications are concerned. In addition, if users changed their minds before the file space was reused, files could be undeleted by removing the deleted flag or other indicator from the FAT record associated with the files in question. A simple undelete utility performs this function. What happens when the newly free space has new documents written to it? Good question. Both user actions, such as having a new document, and automated computer actions, like recording a log file of network activity, will cause the drive to write new data into allocated space designated as free. Whether any particular cluster containing any particular deleted file will be overwritten and when will depend both A, upon the frequency and volume of data writing, and B, on the algorithm determining drive cluster writing priorities. Until overwritten, data on a drive can be retrieved whether it resides in used space, free space, slack space, or even because of special circumstances, an allocated space. How is this relevant to electronic discovery? When a computer forensics technician needs to take an image of a computer's hard drive for searching, they have to decide whether to take a complete physical image or retrieve only selected files. Oftentimes, this decision will be made based on the specific requirements of a case, but it is important to know the differences in data you will end up with when using one of those two methods. A complete forensic image copies not only the file system, but also the lower level information on the physical platters. This allows you to not only view those documents residing in the active space, 
but all deleted files not yet overwritten in free, select, and other special areas. Having this information available can help paint a much better picture of actual usage on the computer. This would be similar to taking an entire filing cabinet out of an office. With single hard drives exceeding one terabyte in size, or 75 million pages of data, some matters are opting to perform specific file type collections. This type of operation targets only specific types of documents, such as only email or only Adobe PDFs. While this can conserve space and drastically speed up processing time, this type of collection only retrieves documents from the file system level. This leaves all the deleted data and other useful information behind. This is similar to taking only files and folders marked AA through CI from a filing cabinet and leaving the rest behind. Deciding on which method is appropriate for your matter is, a, is dependent on many variables. This is where a highly qualified computer forensics expert is crucial. With the advice of an expert, you will be able to decide which type of capture would most adequately serve your needs and cover any possible future discovery requests. Thank you for watching this Eden tutorial.